morning. It's very wet and drizzly today. Um, what can I say? Um, <clears throat> I had some time ago some correspondence from a court, it is on the channel somewhere, um, who said they could issue the enforcement order any time they wanted after they'd had the court case. And I was like, mm, I don't think you can. Um, but then, of course, CDER um, wrote to me. Sorry, I, I, see, I looked up CDER's website after they'd, they'd visited, after he posted his um, enforcement notice. Um, so I looked up their website and it said, Magistrates' orders last forever. <laughs> Basically. <laughs> so I thought, right, hang on, let me get this right. Uh, because as far as I was aware, the law hadn't changed. Um, and it still had, you still only have a year to enforce a magistrate's court order. So I got this from nationaldebtline.org. So you can basically look up how long can you enforce a magistrate's court order for. Nationaldebtline.org came up. Uh, they have 12 months, and this is talking about bailiffs now, they have 12 months from the date of the enforcement notice to take control of your goods. Um, now, it, 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 it seems like a fairly sort of comprehensive site. It's quite well written, so I, I, I don't doubt most of what's in there. Um, but yes, it, 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 there you go. Um, so then I figured out what the courts are doing, of course. Um, they're, they're giving it to a bailiff's firm, let's say Marsden's. <laughs> Um, Morrison's have three attempts, or in Chris Green's case, who worked for Morrison's, I think he had 17 attempts back in the day, um, but they have three attempts and then the, the enforcement order is supposed to be returned to the court. And then what they're doing is they're letting it sit for a while, then they're getting another bailiff's firm in and going, here, enforce this. <laughs> and because all the bailiffs, of course, are, are third party, private limited companies and employees, they don't ask any questions, do they? Because it's cash in their back pocket. So yeah, you just basically fudged all your rules, which have been put in over years, possibly even decades, just so that you're continually putting out the same enforcement notice to try and get your cash. That's what you're doing, isn't it? Um, so I hope that's clear, the courts can't be trusted. It's no wonder the British judiciary system's a laughing stock, is it? Uh, right. PCSO Jessica Hustle, Greater Manchester, gross misconduct, jailed for 19 months. Oh, also PCSO Thomas Fendel. He was jailed for 16 months. Same offence. PC Joshua Savage, Metropolitan Police, charged with assault proceeding. This is, oh, we're flying into 2017. There's not many more. There's only about six or seven left now, I think. So, well, as you can see, we're in 2017. PC... Oh, proceeding, I did that one. Um, WPC Nikki Clark, West Midlands Police, perverting the course of justice, jailed for six months. Alexander McCracken, Ayrshire Police, in decent images distribution, awaiting sentence. So he'll probably get off then. Uh, Miles Doyle. Merseyside Police, gross misconduct, sacked. PC Craig Keane, Metropolitan Police, sexual abuse of a child, jailed for two years. Oh God, right, the one, two, three. Now the next three are awaiting sentence. So there's PC Craig Keane, PC Tashi Majid, PC Wahed Husman. The last two are West Midlands Police, they're both charged with supplying drugs. Craig Keane is Metropolitan Police, funnily enough. Sexual abuse of a child. Oh, sorry, that's the wrong one, no. Uh, <laughs> he was jailed for two years. Right, so the two from West Midlands Police charged with supplying drugs, and it was PC Nicholas Poole. I went the wrong way. Um, Cumbria Police, inciting a child for sex. <sighs> oh, kiddie fiddler, isn't there? Have you seen that... Um, they're, the Met Police, for the Sarah Everard inquiry, are bringing in an independent investigator. <laughs> so that'll be one of their mates then. Um, but Cressida Dick 
who ordered the unlawful killing of John Charles de Menzies because he wasn't the terrorist suspect because they'd lost sight of their terrorist suspect and they thought he was the terrorist suspect and he wasn't um, and was then promoted for it is, is basically she has the final say so. Wonder how that one will turn out then. I, I would suggest that, what was his name, Cousins, the copper? He'll be the only bad apple in the barrel. I think when the report comes out, the, the rest of the coppers will have been doing a sterling job all this time. Um, WPC Elish McSherry, PSNI, Northern Ireland. Drink driving causing death, jailed for nine years. PC David Cockle. Norfolk Police, theft of rare gold coins, jailed for 16 months. Well, from the evidence room, I presume. Unless he actually went to a museum and stole them. Don't know about that. Uh, Manpreet Shergill, Metropolitan Police charged with fraud proceeding. Simon McGing, North Wales Police fraud, 15 months suspended. Judge Alan Hampshire, oh, Judge Nottingham, forged a will, jailed for six months. Well, I would never say that all the judges were bent, but certainly all the ones I've dealt with are. So, yeah. I'm surprised. I think that's the first judge we've ever had. I'm not sure. I don't, maybe they don't normally come under this. I don't know. Uh, PC Daniel Moss, Sussex Police, worked as a prostitute. Sacked. Oh, we had those, those two last time, didn't we? One... One had had sex with a prostitute, and I think the other one had phoned a prostitute or something. They were both sacked, I think. Uh, WPC Charlotte Piers, Metropolitan Police, had sex with a rape victim. Jailed for 22 months. What can you say? How, how would anyone... Not even no, not even coppers would have. Well, maybe it is specialist to coppers. I don't know. How? I don't. Wow. Uh, PC Julian Broadle, South Yorkshire Police, took cocaine, sacked. Well, you must be unlucky, mate, because from what I've heard, quite a lot of coppers take cocaine. Uh, C.S. Gordon Anglesey, North Wales Police, historic child sex abuse, 12 years, died in prison. Good. P.C. Stephen... I'm not... Z Z Z Z Zajko. Zajko. Not sure. Essex Police, smoke cannabis, sacked. P.C. Stephen Riding, Police Scotland, domestic abuse, jailed for five years. Oh, you'll be coming out this year, then, Uh Chief Inspector Stephen Drew, Evan and Somerset Police, shared racist, po racist post, sacked. A police officer, Essex Police, gross misconduct, sacked. God, the list is absolutely endless, isn't it? PC Stephen Burns, Greater Manchester Police, misuse of police database, proceeding. PC Lorna Stoker, Norfolk Police, charge of drink driving, proceeding. PC... Hamiyat Eniyat. <laughs> I wouldn't like to take a guess at that heritage. Is that, I don't know. Is that Turkish or something, do you think? I have no idea. It's not a name I've ever heard. Greater Manchester Police Growing Cannabis Jail for four years. PC Ben Staff, Norfolk Police, one million pound fraud, jailed for four and a half years. He's not the only one, is there? There's been a few massive fraud cases on this list. PC James McGibbon, Metropolitan Police, charge of rape proceeding, and PC Sean Race, Northern Ireland drug dealing, jailed for three and a half years. Wow. It's quite frightening, really. <laughs>